It's the beginning of the new year and I wanted to share with you some of the technologies and also some of the other random things I'm going to be spending some time learning this year, or at least I hope to be learning them this year. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, the first thing that I want to learn a little bit more about this year is GraphQL. Uh, so if you notice, I've been doing some live streams on GraphQL. I've been learning a whole lot about it. Um, I don't really want to go down the path of becoming an expert in GraphQL. I can already start seeing the benefits just using it even after a few weeks. Um, but I do think that it's not quite ready to take over REST APIs yet. I think it still needs to grow, still needs to mature. Um, that being said, I do think it's important to learn what the options are and GraphQL may be the right solution for you if you're building a new application. Um, so I wanna kind of spend some time to learn the, the details of it. I wanna implement my own GraphQL backend server and interact with my own database and get the whole thing running from front end to back end. Uh, so that's the first item, GraphQL. And the second item that I wanna learn more about is kind of related to the first, but it's AWS AppSync. For whatever reason, I had the name AppSync stuck in my head, but what I really meant to say was Amplify. So anytime you hear me say AppSync here, what I really meant to say was Amplify. Now AWS AppSync is a newer service. It helps folks get set up with their full stack projects very quickly and it integrates with a whole bunch of AWS services so that you can very easily add a database, very easily create APIs, very easily do a whole bunch of other things such as uh, user permissioning using Cognito, setting up your domains and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now, the reason why I want to use this second after using GraphQL is because AppSync kind of um, abstracts away some of the, the implementation details of using GraphQL. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused. So before going into AppSync and using all this stuff on the back end, including GraphQL, I want to learn how to implement it just from scratch before I kind of use these abstractions that will simplify my life. I'd suggest the same thing for anyone else that's learning AppSync. I think it's a good idea to get familiar with either REST APIs or GraphQL if you're going to be using that as the back end because it does abstract away a lot of the complexity from you and can and make things pretty confusing. The third item that I want to spend more time learning is Aurora Serverless. Um, in the past couple of years, I've kind of defaulted to using NoSQL solutions and a lot of the pet projects I've been working on. And I think this is just because I'm very familiar with NoSQL and very comfortable with it. I know how to model my data correctly for my access patterns. Uh, but I think it is appropriate to choose the right tool for the job. And for a lot of people, if you don't know what your application is going to be, uh, using a RDBMS may be the right solution for you. So I want to get familiar with Aurora Serverless, just kind of experiment with it, see how well it performs, maybe run some tests, and maybe integrate it with one of the pet projects that I'm working on right now. The fourth item is CDK, which stands for Cloud Development Kit, it's another service by AWS. And this is kind of an extension of AWS CloudFormation, and I'm already very well versed with AWS CloudFormation. Uh, both CloudFormation and CDK are infrastructure as code solutions. They allow you to write either template files in CloudFormation or real code in CDK so that you can programmatically create your resources. Like I said, I've been using CloudFormation for years, very, very comfortable with it, but CDK gives you a lot of very useful constructs in any programming language um, so that you can create your resources more intelligently. It does seem that's where the industry is going as well, so I do want to spend some time just to play around with it, experiment with it, and see how it comp compares to CloudFormation. The next item is AWS TimeStream. So this is a newer service from AWS that's more dedicated to like time-based use cases. Uh, some examples are like maybe Uber or Lyft, where you're tracking all your drivers and their positions over time. So the queries that you're gonna do are usually time-based, like who are all the drivers that are five minutes away of this location kind of thing, um, or give me kind of analysis on a certain time frame. So that's where TimeStream is useful. Uh, not too interested in building an application with this, just kind of getting some breadth in the new AWS services. So I'm gonna be spending some time on that as well. In terms of programming languages, there's a couple that I wanna learn this year. Uh, the first one is Golang, and there's no real good reason for learning this language. I just kind of want to learn a language this year, and this is one that people are really talking about. Another thing that I'm interested about it is the fact that you have memory management. I've been writing Java and JavaScript for years now, and I'm just kind of bored of garbage collection, so I would like to write code that is more performant, and memory management with Golang seems to be right up the alley in order to do that. Second language that I want to learn is TypeScript. I've been writing a lot of JavaScript lately, and it's kind of made me want to rip my hair out. Uh, so I figured it's a good opportunity to migrate to TypeScript since it seems like a lot of the open source packages these days finally support uh, TypeScript constructs. So that's something I'm going to be spending my time in 2021 and hopefully it'll make my life a little bit easier when working with JavaScript. Um, and the third kind of pair of programming things that I want to learn is 
uh, kind of in the domain of bash scripting. So the first one is called sed, which is a stream editor. So I spent a lot of time looking at logs and kind of an analyzing logs and parsing them and trying to figure out patterns. Um, so sed stands for stream editor. It's a great way to manipulate text, swap things out. It also supports regular expressions. So it lets you do like some very, very dynamic and interesting things. So I want to spend some more time getting more comfortable with sed. I know how to use it in a very basic fashion, but I think it's very useful for those of you that do a lot of log diving and log parsing. Uh, the second one also with bash scripting is awk um, sometimes people call it awk and it's similar to set except that it's more based on delimiters so grouping data or extracting data by delimiters and kind of extracting that out and kind of doing what you wish with it uh, and the final thing that i'm spending a lot of time this year already i've actually had time off work so i've been spending a lot of time speed reading and this is something that's very interesting it's very exciting so most most people read at about 100 to 200 words per minute so i just started looking into speed reading i just started trying it and i'm already up to reading between 400 and 500 words per minute which translates to turning a page every 25 to 30 seconds been really happy with how that's turning out and I'm able to kind of read books very, very quickly, read documentation very quickly. So I'm going to continue to invest in speed reading to make sure I can kind of read all this stuff and not be burning time away. Uh, I'll give you a link to the website I'm using to train myself. It's interactive. It kind of gives you some practice exercises that you can try to improve your skills. And yeah, I think it's a really useful for everyone to learn because too many people read way too slowly. So that's what I'm learning this year. Let me know down below your top five things that you are learning this year. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.